So we have like Dr. Raj with us and then we have uh, Gagandeep Jain as well, who is at the moment kind of a self-isolation quarantined. And we have with us Gary Gupta, who is the chairman and founder of Migrant Trust. And I think this topic of horticulture in the coming days, I think this will be of interest to a lot of people yeah. as it is one of the area which has been identified as an essential skills or essential need area. And I think when we go through further webinar uh, presentation by Dr. Raj, we can found out, find out more about it and how it can help other people if they want to change their career or they want to try something new. So I'm eagerly looking forward to the presentation from Dr. Raj. I'm quite excited myself as well. I bet everyone else may also be who's joining the call. So um, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Gary, <clears throat> part of the Migrant Career Trust. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming today morning. We are a nonprofit organization uh, and our aim and objective is to help support migrants and uh, in fact everyone is uh, in New Zealand uh, to uh, help achieve greater uh, success in their careers. As migrants especially we know that uh, migrants don't get enough information about various sectors and industries. So this is uh, part of an effort uh, in that direction. And we have been running a series of webinars, especially in the post COVID environment. Um, and today we are very happy uh, to have Mr. Raj Saini uh, from Franklin Agritech. Franklin, Franklin Agritech has been uh, one of the pioneers in horticulture education. Uh, and not only uh, that they run <coughs> uh, education uh, uh, institution, but they have their own uh, greenhouses, they have their own uh, uh, business in that area and uh, which provides a lot of vital experience, um, hands-on experience to the students. And Mr. Raj himself has been in this industry for many, many years, I think more than two decades. So uh, uh, it's very um, <clears throat> fortunate for us that he's here to share his knowledge and experiences. And he'll uh, in, uh, inform us today about general uh, careers in horticulture as well. So many people are not aware of what are the aspects of horticulture, what are the job roles that are available, what are the skill sets. So we hope to cover all those areas uh, today. So thank you. I won't take much of your time. Uh, over to you, Siddharth, uh, and I'll take it from there. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Kerry, and it's really lovely to have you all. And now, before we start, I would like to give brief introduction about Dr. Raj. Dr. Raj, who is the director and CEO of the Franklin Agritech, holds MSc in Botany and has done PhD in Corporate Sciences. Dr. Raj has more than 40 years of experience in agriculture, research and development, standardization and generalization and local specific technology based on agri-tech and a lot of agri-based exports as well. He has been training a lot of staffs as well. And Dr. Raj has more than 45 publications in the national and international periodicals. So we are really happy and glad to have you today, Dr. Raj. So now I will hand it over to Dr. Raj to give his presentation. Thank you so much. And Dr. Raj, please start with the presentation. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Gupta and uh, Siddharth. So good morning, everybody. Um, as uh, uh, Siddharth mentioned, I'm Raj Saini from Franklin Institute. So what I'm saying is uh, agriculture in general is growing about growing crops, any crops, and horticulture in particular is uh, is growing the fresh produce, like vegetable, food, flower, herbs, etc. Landscaping and vegetation are the other sectors in that. Uh, production systems, we are all aware about uh, how the production, which is growing crops in the open environment. The other, other system is green production, which is under cover, either green, either plastic or glass or something. Water can be controlled, environment can be modified to an extent. Uh, the, the new system which is being now is the closed indoor system. Yeah, it's a controlled environment and uh, there's no lighting. So lighting is provided artificially with LEDs. The new 
uh, sector, which is urban vertical farming, is coming up very much, especially in the cities. Organic production, uh, we know uh, it is without using agrochemicals. Okay, so I, I'm talking about the New Zealand climate. Yes, New Zealand is mainly temperate climate. Can you hear? Uh, mainly temperate, which is uh, cool summers and uh, very cold winters. Some some parts are subtropical, which is up north toward Cape Rianga. Uh, alpine climate uh, in South Island and uh, <laughs> some mountains. The important fact about uh, New Zealand climate is uh, that the New Zealand seasons <clears throat> are in the opposite months of the year compared to the Northern Hemisphere. So that gives uh, New Zealand big advantage in exporting fresh produce to other countries. Uh, this is New Zealand map with different regions. Uh, you can have a look on that uh, later on. But by and large, each area specializes in different produce. Like for instance, Bay of Plenty is kiwi fruit, Hawksway is grapes and apple and pear and like that. So it's good to go by that. <clears throat> New Zealand horticulture have strengths. Like New Zealand has good climate, uniformly distributed rainfall. <clears throat> the production system uh, has uh, NZ gap uh, standards, which is called good agriculture practices, uh, which includes very strong traceability and quality control. As a result, the New Zealand has reputation for high quality and ethical produce. Produce availability in opposite season offers high potential for export. So two things, one is three things, the quality of produce, high reputation of New Zealand horticulture and the produce availability in the opposite seasons of the year uh, helps a lot uh, in exporting crops overseas or developing the overseas market. Uh, this is uh, the, the diagram shows how the New Zealand export has progressed and there are ambitious targets for future as well. So we are doing almost $6 billion of export at the moment, uh, which is quite significant. It makes like 8-9% of our total export from New Zealand. New Zealand horticulture has constraints to grow, uh, every system has. And the trained workforce availability is one of the major cons constraints. Why? Because the horticulture prog progress has been spectacular, producing like 10 billion of produce at the moment, ambitious growth targets. Horticulture is severely constrained due to availability of trained workforce. It's not the labor, it's a trained workforce who can handle the production, who can handle technical things. Both men and women from different cultural background have role and opportunity in this sector. This is a study done by the Ministry of Primary Industries sometime back in 2012, where they projected about 15,000 more people with qualifications and 26,000 people to replace the natural attrition of the workers within the industry. Uh, this is still true. So there's the very hard to make a progress on that. So that's why we need to bring more and more people and uh, advise them or, or inform them about the careers horticulture can offer them. Horti sector needs thousands of staff in various sectors like plant nurseries, garden centers, landscapers, greenhouse hothouses, vegetable producers, flower producers, fruit plantations, council parks and gardens, revegetation projects. Carriers in horticulture, uh, what kind of uh, work is there? Like you could be grower, agronomist, disease pest scouting, sales representative, production manager, landscaping specialist, pack house supervisor, quarantine officer, logistic, which is supply chain, which is big, big thing. Entrepreneur, uh, I'll explain that in detail. There's a link at the bottom which gives various career options uh, for horticulture. Significance of horticulture in New Zealand uh, is shown by that horticulture is classified as short skilled category by Immigration New Zealand, which is very important for the migrant community. During COVID-19, horticulture has been declared as essential services. 
for post covid recovery horticulture has been prioritized as an important economic economic enabler the in budget 2020 massive emphasis is laid on training or retraining and grow the workforce by 10000 people as soon as possible so there's a link underneath uh, you can have a look later on careers in horticulture what uh, kind of careers you can develop uh, or a new person can develop in horticulture jobs is is number 1 thousand of jobs available for trained staff job security is very high good earning potential like 40 to 70 thousand uh, dollar to start with because people put num- uh, more number of hours and much more uh, earning for the managerial staff or the supervisory staff one one possibility after studying horticulture is uh, is uh, go into job the other possibility is uh, be your own boss you can set up your own business uh, the the barrier to entry is not that high because you can start with low capital uh, have some land or greenhouse on lease and start from there technical advice is available cross industry support is very good easy to enter markets like you can enter auction shops local market direct sale entering supply chain is bit difficult but one can start at uh, like shops or local markets earning potential for whole family and convert the spare time into the money the family they can set up a project in their uh, land uh, like in lifestyle blocks many people have done that and the family can work in the off hours and earn good money out of that so that's the second possibility this is after you have done some job the the third possibility is uh, horticulture contracting which is a big business line uh, you can be a specialized horticulture contractor and handle some operation for the growers and uh, that gives very good money and uh, it's quite challenging but but it is in high demand other contracting lines are agrochemical spraying irrigation installer logistic support landscaping etc so quite a few things you can do on contracting basis to to summarize this uh, this part about horticulture in general horticulture is significant <coughs> part of new zealand economy there is a tangible need for trained manpower immigration new zealand has classified horticulture in short skilled category new zealand government is placing major emphasis on horticulture development horticulture offers tangible career opportunities uh, especially for the new entrants so the message from this is get trained and be ready to participate in this progressive area the next part is about uh, the training uh, the the franklin institute offers so what ha- happened actually like 5 uh, 7 uh, years back we were into horticulture production for about 20 years and we are facing lot of difficulty in getting the trained staff so on the one hand we saw industry is starving of the trained staff on the other hand we saw that there's not enough effort uh, in 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 the country to produce those kind of people so that's where we thought of setting up the college uh, and which is operating very well at the moment it's franklin institute of agri technology uh, and we have two sites auckland and toranga at the moment and we offer training programs in horticulture one year program is new zealand certificate in horticulture production level 4 and two year program is a new zealand diploma in horticulture level 5 all these programs are fully approved and accredited to nzqa and are externally monitored these qualifications once the, the, the students have done it they can see their qualification listed on new zealand website uh the one year program program is uh, suitable for uh, the mature people the two year is for the young school leavers from new zealand or the new entrants from overseas entry requirement international students age 18 years it looks like dr raj has again you know lost somehow due to internet issues so maybe we can continue with gagan where we were with respect to that uh, gender diversity and you were mentioning that uh, females are doing pretty well as well so if you can elaborate further on that for our you know 10 days so that would be good uh, i i think um 
some employers might have in their head that females are not good worker because of their physical strength but that's not the case uh in horticulture industry people all they look for is the skills you have if you go to bigger uh, production nurseries like new zealand hot house or waiuku gourmet they are quite big um, capsicum and tomato growers and all the workers uh, the majority are female because they are good at um, twisting the plants they are good at picking the fruits they are good at managing things uh, but yes for physical strength they, there are sometimes personal preference but it's just a personal preference that there is no way that people would think okay the males are better worker i don't think that exist and perfect and it also depends on the skills you have some people gain skills with experience some people gain skills with the education so more skills you have better you can get into the industry okay so it correct. depends the skills you have correct no no thank you so much for sharing so that means this is gender neutral industry so whoever is eager yeah. and willing to join is more help than you know willing should come in and ask talk to you yes this we okay. have lot of female students and they are doing really well right 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 so i was explaining the entry requirement for the international students age 18 year ncl level 2 or senior secondary fee 17500 per annum 350 insurance scholarships are available for deserving students english requirement is ielts 5.5 with no band less than 5 which is not too high nz cel which is new zealand certificate in english language level 3 or 4 or equivalent is required domestic students which are new zealand uh, pr or citizen age 17 nc level 2 for young student uh, we have done fees free for eligible students most of the students are eligible for that generally physical fit to do the practical work and light physical work ability to enjoy and work in outdoor settings learn practical skills so our our training program is more based on the practical skills than on the theory uh i'll give, uh, explain a little bit understand plant structure function and growing needs of the plant grow range of nursery crops propagate plant from seed cuttings bulbs runnings etc learn budding grafting disease pest management and agrochemical application growing media soil as culture etc nutrient these are dosing systems nutrient dosing irrigation systems handling sensitive equipment greenhouse machinery heating system etc normally uh But these things are not taught especially the systems like how to do the dosing of nutrients how to handle the sensitive equipment how to handle the greenhouse machinery because we have these things happening on site we can show the students help them to understand optional extra are some trade certificates like grow safe first aid four lit certificates we arrange these for the students in case they want that <clears throat> earn while you learn while the students are studying they can earn especially the internal students can work for 20 hours per week when classes are on can work full time in the scheduled holidays uh student they can get student visa while they are studying and after completion of two year program they can get one year uh open work visa which can be converted into a essential skill visa with suitable job offer new zealand citizens can work any number of time hours any time placement service we do placement service uh, currently all our current student and the graduates are in jobs most of them are in jobs at the moment and there is uh, still potential the reason for that is one thing our study is quite relevant to the industry needs we have been operating in the industry for a long time as part and parcel of the industry and uh, and uh, the third is the demand actually exists in 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 the sector these are various companies some of the companies uh, where the people are working like pontwall rainbow nurseries gome papri paprika galet rupex is a brown company uh, zl india so all these companies are the many more like tnm nursery etc so quite shafer nursery so quite a few other businesses where the students are working they are accepted very well uh, because we are a specialized college uh, offering uh, doing teaching in horticulture only we train student and skill needed by the industry we operate as part and parcel of the horticulture sector 
parent company Rupex has been operating for 20 years, have highly qualified staff, training centers located in horticulture production sites at fringes of commercial horticulture hub. The Auckland one is in Pukikoi, uh, which is the main vegetable growing area in New Zealand. Toranga center is uh, very close to the, the main uh, kiwi fruit and uh, avocado uh, you know, orchards in that area. So you can have a look on have a look on the website uh, go horticulture go.nz recently set up by hot new zealand where they give the opportunities the jobs are advertised and you can have idea about the, the careers so final message from us is horticulture is a backbone of new zealand economy horticulture operates at high level of ethical and traceability standards with the high quality control systems in place Thousands of trained staff required to keep horticulture operating and progressing. Horticulture offers high job security and potential to set up your own produce or contracting business. International students have high success rate of employment and settling down in New Zealand horti sector. To conclude, I say come join us and be part of the success story happening right now in New Zealand. So with that, I thank you all. And uh, I think uh, we'll put the, the video link yes. now. Yes. And after the video, we can get back uh, and any question answers or any discussion we can do after that. Yeah. Franklin Agritech is an NZQA registered private training establishment housed on a 24 acres agricultural production site and operates as part and parcel of the Rupex group of companies. We have two branches in New Zealand, Auckland and Tauranga, both based on production sites where students get actual hands-on experience. The Immigration New Zealand has uh, brought out a new skill shortage list, which is uh, classified region-wise. So horticulture and our qualification falls in all the regions throughout the country. So that way, uh, the requirement is there throughout the country. Franklin Institute of Agrotechnology is uh, based on a production site. And uh, uh, we have been doing horticulture production for the last 20 years. And we have a lot of uh, technology which works on the ground. So we teach those skills to the students and those are very much valued by the growers, by the employer in the field. Our main emphasis is on growing plants from seed and then uh, we also teach them how to grow plants from cuttings and then the techniques of budding and grafting which are very much required in the, in the fruit trees and also then how to manage those plants in the greenhouse and in the outdoor situation. Students always come first at Fiat. A range of guidance and support systems is available to students in order to ensure that a safe, caring and supporting environment is created for students which meets individual needs and provides for full personal development. Fiat is committed to helping students achieve the best outcome from their study. Doing my level 5 in horticulture studies uh, with wonderful students from all different parts of the country. I'm studying horticulture because I'd like to learn the practical side of growing and we learn how to transplant and grow plants from seedlings. I have passion for horticulture, that's why I am here. I'm learning new techniques, lots about the industry here. I've, I've learned uh, production planning and how the glass house work uh, because in Malaysia there have been not much glass house, that's why it's quite instant, interesting here. Actually, I learned uh, agriculture back in my country, so I want to learn uh, more about horticulture. I'm here to study agriculture because I want to have a better life. Um, if I have chance, I want to start my own business with uh, the knowledge. Oh, I have been learning horticulture level 5, and that teaches me different things like how to do grafting, cutting, and how to, do, how to grow plants from seeds and all. 
it has a very good academic focus for in-class study and providing them with the knowledge to excel in the fields. So in many institutes, people sit in the class and they learn about things but they can't do practically. But at Franklin Agritech, we teach them how to go on the ground and do things. And they learn, starting from the basic stuff, they learn all the technical and hardcore commercial techniques which can help them to get better jobs in the industry. Come study horticulture at the Franklin Institute of Agritechnology in New Zealand and build your bright future in this booming sector worldwide. Have any questions? Please visit us at www.fiat.ac.nz. an amazing video. Thank you Dr. Raj okay. for your presentation and now mm -hmm. if anyone has any questions you can ask Dr. Raj and first of all Dr. Raj I have a question like as you mentioned mm -hmm. that's in high demand so in the current mm -hmm. situation in the COVID scenario so if the people want to change their line or they change their career into horticulture so how mm -hmm. easy or difficult it would be for someone to switch their line? Yes, it's uh, it's very much uh, possible uh, to to do that because uh, uh, we start from zero level. Even if somebody doesn't have any background in horticulture, many of the students uh, uh, who has done like level seven in business they have shifted, or some other mature people without any horticulture background. Uh, there are domestic students, uh, Kiwi ladies, and uh, with the Maori lady, and like that uh, Chinese. So the people have shifted without any background in horticulture. So they can come and we start from zero level. As it's a practical course, uh, it's, it's easy for them to understand, see the things happening, then go backward and understand the theory. So that's how it works. So it's very much possible. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So I think Praveen uh, wants to, Pavan wants to ask a question. Pavan, you were about to say something? You have to mm -hmm. unmute yourself first, Pavan. No, we can't still hear you. We can't hear you. Your mic is not working, Pavan. Maybe try without the earphones. Uh, try without the headphones? No. Maybe mic is not remove working. it from your laptop and try on the laptop, maybe? No. Okay, you can uh, put a question in the chat, Pavan. You can put the question in the chat and we can ask for you. Yes, yes. And Dr. Raj, as you said that there are uh, KB ladies, Mori ladies who are coming. So is there mm -hmm. any kind of a transferable skill that you can bring from your previous job into this? Suppose you were working, say, you have good communication skills or, you know, whatever. There's any skill which you can bring from your past job which can be used or transferred into the horticulture? Yes, yes, uh, it is. Uh, that can be done. Like, like somebody has good sales experience. Yeah. Uh, does horticulture and they can get into horticulture sales. We, we tell them about horticulture, but uh, uh, somebody having the management skills, they could act as a supervisory or the management job. So we provide them technical skills, any anything, uh, because horti sector needs all kinds of people, uh, starting from the, the IT people, you know, the sales people, uh, marketing people, so all those are required. It's not only just the production in horticulture, which they, they're doing. There are many, many jobs. And uh, even those jobs, not, not uh, many people are available who can get into those. Because horticulture sector, people view it as only production. So if people come with some kind of skills, learn horticulture, they can probably uh, start doing the same thing. Like somebody, for instance, uh, is a mechanical engineer. He does level four, level five. So he can probably get into a machinery part of horticulture. So like that, any any IT skills, he can probably get into, uh, you know, uh, those kind of skills in horticulture because a lot of things have been computerized at the moment in horticulture, especially supply chain. Traceability needs a lot of IT skills. So those skills are useful. Uh, what we teach is it's more of the orientation for them to get into horticulture sector. They can still use their skills. Correct. Thank you. And okay. 
one more question related to that is that the background that you have mentioned the entry requirement like is it essential mm -hmm. to have a science background or a background doesn't matter so is any specific background requirement what you studied in nca2 or from india mm -hmm. or overseas uh, no it doesn't it doesn't uh, it could be anything any uh, but but preferably if one has studied biosciences it easier for them but as i said we start from the zero level so it can be done Okay, so there's no requirement of uh, science background. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have not specified anything. The okay. entry requirement is the senior secondary from any school, but they should be fresh uh, school leavers. Like uh, shouldn't be two, more than two year gap after that, uh, and they should be conversant with the agriculture. Uh, I mean, the horticulture crop growing, okay. especially in the interview when the immigration asks them in the interview. that why they want to shift to horticulture they should be able to explain that okay uh, can i ask one question um, uh, raj uh, that's gary here uh, the question is that <clears throat> in the post covid environment uh, uh, you know uh, where people are uh, uh, trying to change industries and sectors so um, uh, what is your advice uh, like if people want to get into horticulture um uh, what's your advice what background of people is more easy or are there any transferable skills uh, which uh, those people can easily adapt to horticulture are there any for example people who are getting redundant in hospitality or uh, you know tourism sector so uh, is there any skills that they have which you think will be vital for horticulture and can easily adapt to horticulture Ah uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, because I just mentioned, horticulture has uh, uh, different jobs, different type of jobs in horticulture. Uh, is even uh, uh, what they call is eco tourism is coming up quite a bit. Agriculture tourism, where you get uh, uh, people from abroad, the agriculture growers, they come and uh, go around. So those kind of jobs are available. If somebody is good in organizing uh, trips or or in tourism. they get into horticulture they understand what the horticulture is probably they can gradually grow into those lines like that it for instance or uh, hospitality people can change but but you know uh, they, they they are hard working people so that's what you need in in, in horticulture okay okay and so, and it always uh, always pays to have uh, you know level of competence and if you have that level of competence like the management skills you can get uh, get to the manager level very soon okay okay uh, okay i think pavan's question was he just uh, put on the chat he's saying he's asking or clarifying so that doing the one year course is that the entry point for horticulture yes yes it is uh, horticulture one year can be done uh, two type of a few type of people who do uh, one year program uh one group is like the students who have done level 5 6 or level 7 and availed the job search visa so they need to do only one year program because even if they do two year program they are not going to get job search visa so they go for one year program mostly level 4 and some other students who have got lot of experience uh, in horticulture they can go for one year level 5 but most of the students uh like the school leavers in new zealand or the, the fresh student coming to new zealand uh who has not done the qualification new zealand they go for two year program so that they get uh, uh you know uh, one year open job search visa and then they can apply for essential skill visa uh in in new zealand as well uh, the young students we we prefer them to go for two year program they can do it level 4 and then do level 5 but i think uh uh four is more like than the bit entry level yeah okay. but depends on the person if somebody even doing level 4 wants to know more skills we can do that yeah we are open to that okay so pavan that answers your question i think so yeah okay uh, any other uh, person in the audience they have any questions because i think then we can wrap up in some time so uh, siddharth over to you if you have any questions Yes, yes. I have like uh, one question, Doctor Raj, because it was uh, interesting to note, Doctor Raj mentioned that you can do your own business or you can be contractor, which is a very good option for people who are domestic and you want to take become their own manager. 
So like um, you mentioned, it's quite easy to set a business. The capital is low. So what are the other things you need to keep in mind if you want to get into your own business or you want to contract? So is there any key key things to be kept in mind before uh, setting up your own business in this field or doing contracting? Uh, for setting up your own business, what I will suggest uh, that line you want to set up your own business, better uh, you do job in that area so that you understand the, the inside story of growing. Mm -hmm. uh, growing is not just uh, putting this much of uh, fertilizer, this much of water or this much of uh, temperature. It's more than that. You have to have the feel of the growing. So get that feel, see what the practical problems are and then start your own business. Uh, that I'll, I'll strongly suggest anybody uh, getting into that. And uh, if somebody wants to start something, uh, he or she is most welcome to come and talk to us because we can always uh, connect them to the people who are very specialized in that area. Right. So, so we can do that. And uh, other thing is, uh, you know, uh, because the labor cost is quite high in hearty business, Okay. Uh, it's good if the, the whole family is keen to work in that sector, mm -hmm. maybe part-time or something. So those things can help. The two things, one is one should have some experience. And the second thing is uh, uh, it's a hard, the whole family, they want to participate rather than hiring the people from outside all the time. So that can help a lot. And we are here, we can, we can uh, uh, <coughs> connect to the right people, very right people who are the industry experts in that area. Okay. Contracting, contracting is uh, uh, you have to be good in handling operations. Like uh, I know the contractors, they they earn very good money. Uh, like they work with the growers first, and over time they develop into contractors. Uh, there are contractors who does who do planting for the grower. They say, okay, we charge you this much per hectare of planting lettuce or collie or cabbage, and then they hire the labor and get it right. The planting. It's not just putting plant in the soil. They have to get it right the way the grower want. Because they've done over years, they can do it pretty fast and in the proper way. Like a lot of harvesting, kiwi fruit, and a uh, lot of things go by contracting. Okay. So uh, we have uh, two questions from uh, Gurpal. So Gurpal, do you want to uh, show your video and ask them directly to Raj? If Gurpal, you can hear us. Oh, he has a mic issue. Okay, so I'll ask uh, questions on his behalf then. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, he's saying uh, two questions. First, he's asking that can Rupex offer franchisee type of glass house type horticulture rather than standalone job or training or contracting? Um, uh, I don't know what he means. Maybe you can understand that better. So he's saying franchisee type of glass house type of horticulture kind of giving franchisee. And also mm -hmm. he's asking what is the future on automation to replace manual jobs in horticulture? Yeah, uh, the first part, uh, Rupex, we don't do any franchising uh, at the moment and we don't intend to uh, because it's uh, it's quite specialized job. Uh, there are, because it's a nursery and, uh, but, but there are other businesses, uh, I, I don't know if there is any a franchise system going on in horticulture, mm -hmm. except for the uh, supplies like the horticulture supplies or setting up a garden center. Uh, those are the businesses uh, which which one can start with the, as a franchisee. Thank you, Dr. Raj. Uh, so we have just a couple of few more minutes. So if mm -hmm. anyone has any other question, please raise it now. If not, then maybe we can have a word of thanks to Dr. Raj and his team for coming today and giving such insightful presentation and taking the question and answers from all of us. So thank you so much, Dr. Raj and uh, your team. And maybe any last words from the Gary before we close the session for today? Uh, no, I just uh, would like to again, uh, as Siddharth is saying, thank you all uh, to um, Raj and his team, uh, uh, you know, from Franklin, who have been very proactive. Uh, we wanted to actually do this event uh, earlier, 
but uh, because of the lockdown we couldn't do the physical event and here we are in the virtual world uh, and mm-hmm. uh, the advantage is that you know we can reach out to far more people uh, so thank you uh, rajji for your uh, uh, great views and uh, very important insights into this sector and uh, where uh, the job market really requires to uh, you know open up and also see uh, what are the potential in other sectors i think this is a very important step in that direction so um, uh, thank you to everyone and all the attendees uh, we will be sharing the video of this webinar in case you want to go through it again and we'll be sharing details of raj and his team as well uh, with you on email uh, so uh, keep in touch follow uh, the migrant careers website and our social media we keep posting new jobs new opportunities and our upcoming webinars uh, thank you for joining us and over to you sudarth thank you so thank much you, yeah thank you everybody for joining and sorry for the internet uh, you know muck up uh, next time we'll organize it properly and i really thank everybody and if there are any questions please be feel free to send it to us we are or call us on the phone we are quite happy to answer those so yeah. thank you very much everybody thank you dr raj for sharing your details and everything and i think as mentioned by dr raj is more than happy to help everyone whether you want to join or he can even hand hold you if you want to have some business projects in your mind or contracting job so he's very helpful and i think if anyone is interested they can get in touch directly with dr raj and thank you once again all of you and hope all of you have a wonderful day and a nice weekend so it's goodbye from here thank you thank you goodbye